Hi y'all, it's Charlene from the Crafty Art Shack and we're back here today with another challenge video. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, so let's get on with the crafts. Let's go! Here we go with DIY number one. I have all of these seasoning bottles that I rescued from my community thrift store. The other day I was in the kitchen and I was cleaning out some of my spices and putting them in mason jars. And when I was doing this, I decided I was going to take these and use them for my uh, little granddaughters. And they love to cook in their little kitchen, so I'm adding some beads to this. Now, don't worry because I'm going to seal these shut. And I am going to take these black pepper cans as do, and do it as well. Now, I'm not removing any of the spices because I wanted them to get used to the different smells and to um, be familiar with what that spice smells like. And so I talked with their mom and she said, sure, it would be good if I super glued it and I took in hot glued it as well. And then she would watch them really closely because she doesn't let them play with their kitchen unless she's out there with them. And so that's what we're doing here. We're going to super glue these lids on. We're going to add a bead to each of the cans and jars, super glue the beads on and hot glue or super glue the lids on and hot glue the lids for double protection. And then we're going to wipe them down and get them ready for them. And we'll see the rest of these at the final reveal. All right, here we go with DIY number two. Here's a little tray that I finished for the thrift flip road trip project and i asked y'all what you thought i should do to it if i should put wax on it if i should put a transfer on it what i should do the majority of you said add a transfer now this was a little silver dish that somebody had done some stuff to and messed it up and so i repainted it and if you want to see what that looks like go watch the last thrift flip road trip that was done uh, last week in March and you'll see what, how I refinish this and so what I'm doing here is I'm rubbing on this transfer now I'm gonna tell you this transfer didn't come off of, onto this very easy first of all you got all those little divots for the plate but y'all all agreed the majority of you agreed that I should put some kind of transfer in the center of this dish so that's what I'm doing and oh my gosh did it take a while so anyway we will see the rest of this one at the final reveal when I finally get all of this off and yes it took a long time <laughs> but I uh, prevailed and I was not gonna let it beat me so we'll see it at the final reveal now here we go with DIY number three now here's a silver tray that I picked up from I I think it was the local thrift store I'm not sure if it was that but somebody had polished this so much that silver was polished off of it except for the legs and the bottom side and you see how that top side had started turning yellow um, well I took and cleaned it with a baby wipe and cleaned it up really really good and then I I'm prepping it so I can paint it. Now this project did not turn out how I wanted it to and I'm going to show you what happened. But let's get it cleaned up and move to the next step. Now I got my Dixie Belle slick stick out and it's now called Bonding Boss and we are going to paint the whole face of this tray. Now we're not going to paint the edges over there where the handle is and that little ornate piece that goes around. We're just going to paint around the edge. So I got a small brush out because I did not want to get any paint on this. And if you get it on there, wipe it off immediately. Now, I could have gone over the whole tray, but that's not what I had envisioned. So I'm going to paint it with this uh, slick stick first and then we'll go from there. Now here's the part where I covered it with the slick stick and got it on there and was trying to get all my brush strokes out because I didn't want any of that showing through and I wanted to make sure I had a good coat of this on there. Then the next thing I did, got out the silk all-in-one mineral paint which means it's the chalk paint. Sorry about my camera you guys. The chalk paint with the um, sealer in it and so that's what I'm using and I'm going to give it one good coat of this white cap 
and that my camera's trying to focus on the tip of my brush. So if it goes out of focus, I apologize. So I'm going to go all the way around, put a good coat of this white cap on here. And I had been envisioned this being white, but guess what happened? Can somebody tell me in the description box below what happened? Or not in the description box in that uh comment section below <laughs> um, tell me what you think happened to this piece it didn't show up after I painted it with white paint now after I got this on there and it got good and dry I went and got out my transfers and I found these black and white transfers in some of the Dixie Bell stuff that I had and I'm gonna cut out the ones that I think would look absolutely gorgeous on this tray and we're going to prep them and get them ready now after i get them uh, cut out then i'm going to rub them on to my tray now that tray looks white to y'all doesn't it it is completely dry completely dry and so i'm going to get my transfers on there and get them rubbed in really well and here's what they look like now i had a problem here when my transfer broke as i was going up over the curb so I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to look and see if there's another transfer I can lay over the top of it to fix it. And then I couldn't find one. So guess what I did? Look at here. Here's what I did. I got my fine point Sharpie marker out. I said, it's black and white. I'm going to draw this back in there where it should be. And guess what? It worked. It turned out absolutely gorgeous when I by the time I got done it looked like it belonged there and that if you didn't know I broke that transfer you wouldn't even recognize that it was there so let's get moving on to the next step I agree that transfer is not absolutely perfect but it will work for what I was doing so the next thing I'm going to do and order to keep my transfer from breaking I'm going to cut out cut it apart this time to put it on here and I'm going to cut it in different pieces so that I'm going to try to keep it from breaking it still ends up breaking a little bit but not as bad as it did on that first one so let me get this cut apart and get it rubbed on and we'll move to the next step so far so good we haven't cracked it now we're going to start adding our other pieces back to this and get them put on here and then we'll move on to the next step i got my transfer all on there and that tray is still white it is now i'm going to put this silk extra coat on here and even after i get done i'm making sure there's nothing on my tray and i'm going to put a generous coat on here because I want to protect these transfers if somebody wants to use this so I'm gently going over my transfers with this and putting this on there to protect the transfers and I'm going to go all over the white paint and over the transfer and I got something on my brush got it on there so I'm trying to get that off and then um, we're going to let this dry look at this this turned out absolutely gorgeous and then I will show you the rest of this at the final reveal and we'll talk about it because <laughs> it is so beautiful it is so white it is so pretty but you will not believe what happened to it now here is DIY number four now here is our next project that I started working on and unfortunately the weather in Florida was not cooperating with us. But this is what it looked like on the sides. Now here is the stripper that I use for this project. Now here is my husband out here teaching me how to strip this piece of furniture because this is what he does at work for a living. And so I see where that white spot is. That's where I put my stripper on there but I bought a cheap stripper and it didn't work and there's so many jokes in that <laughs> but he took me to buy that other stripper that was the more expensive he says you always want to buy a good stripper don't buy a cheap one <laughs> and I was cracking up I said okay babe okay so he had me put it on there and he said the key to keep to stripping a piece of furniture is <laughs> to keep the stripper good and wet I was like okay and he said and don't touch it don't touch this you can't scrape this down it's not ready yet he said you want to let the stripper do all the work 
I had so many jokes, it wasn't even funny. But I said, okay, whatever you say, babe. Now, I did not get to complete this project because of the rain here in Florida. And we were working outside. And this top of this thing took quite a while to just get it done. And so... I'm showing you here the stripper again that I used that he had me go get because it was the better stripper. Unfortunately, because of the rain, um, as soon as we've got this cleaned off and I just took my paint uh, scraper there that I'm showing you and we scraped the top of this off and got it good and cleaned off. And then he came out with some mineral spirits and um, a, what's it called? Steel wool. And we, after we scraped all of this off and got it into a box and threw that away, then he took mineral spirits and a piece of steel wool and cleaned it up. And we will see what that top looks like at the final reveal. And maybe next time for the next Third Thursday Thrift Flip, I'll get this piece finished because I need to get it done. And it, it, trust me, the top of this is absolutely gorgeous. I could not believe that somebody painted this piece. And I almost don't want to paint it back any color because it is so gorgeous. But we'll see that at the final reveal. Here's another DIY to try out for yourself. All right, here we go with our little chair. Now this is the table that we made and we're making a chair to go with it. Now what I did is I took and made some copies of a chair off the internet and these this is just a basic chair pattern and I'm showing you this because you can make this chair in several different sizes. Now what I did is I went on my printer and I sized it down to 55%. I probably should have only sized this down to 75% and it would have worked better. Now, I am using a pattern off the internet and this is the first time I've used it. So I run into a few problems here and I'm going to show you how to fix those. So let's get into this project a little bit more. So what I did is I went and wrote out what I needed to cut of each piece and how many. And then I labeled each one of them A, B, C, D, E, and F. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I took some of these paint sticks and I cut two pieces that would be wide enough to fit on that. And then this is where I took and cut the A pieces already. And I want to show you how I do this. Now this is the B pieces and I'm putting the sticky side of my sticky note up and labeling B. Now I'm just sanding the ends of my thing to make sure that it's straight. Now I lay it on my pattern and I mark out where I need to mark this and I flip the end around and just mark it from the other end as well because I need to cut two of those. So I cut two of those the length that the pattern says. Now you will and I just mark that one. Now I'm going to cut all the way around this one. Now this is real soft craft wood that you can get from Michaels or online and you'll get these little nubs that'll come up on the end. But as I cut these pieces, I'm laying them on the sticky stuff of the sticky note, if that makes sense. And we're just going to continue cutting each one of our pieces by laying it on the pattern until we get all the pieces cut that we need. Now here we are, we've cut all the legs. Now I've cut the little seat pattern out of that block that I showed you and I'm laying it down there to make sure that it matches. Now you could cut these patterned pieces out and lay them on your piece of wood with a glue stick and glue them on there temporarily so that you get them measured out correctly. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking and laying out where the pieces go that I have to glue together and starting from there. Now this is the first little section we're going to glue together and I'm kind of seeing where they need to go. Now I was going to use this dap glue but it's it's just too hard to get out of the bottle so I'm going to switch back to wood glue and hot glue. So that's what I'm doing now and I'm getting out my wood glue and yeah when you don't use these they kind of get stopped up so you got to reach in there and unstop them with your exacto knife or something because this is a very fine um, uh, wood glue tip and it's especially made for doing small stuff like this so yeah you got to get all that wood glue that's dried up in there out and then you're going to add a little bit of wood glue add a little bit of hot glue and then we're going to put it together now we're going to 
you're going to wipe off these little edges that have extra on it and then you're just going to press it into place and you'll keep doing this until you get all the pieces laid in there like they should be and then it should look like this first before i let me say this when you're gluing this together don't lay it back down on your paper that's your pattern because you do not want to get it stuck to that pattern and if you're putting wood glue and hot glue on there some of that wood glue is going to seep out and it will get on your pattern and it will stick to it yeah ask me how i know yep this girl did it she sure did now you want to lay it down and make sure everything is nice and square and put into place and then you're going to let this sit and dry and it's what it should look like and the next thing I did is I took some tape, uh, painter's tape, and I'm going to tape this together. And this is going to act like my little vise. So I'm going to tape it around this side, and then I'm going to add, flip it over and add another piece to the other side so that it stays together and, until it gets good and dry. So you want to kind of put it on there, stretch it across, and then set this piece aside to dry. Now let's work on the next piece. So we're going to lay out pieces C, D, and E is what you need for this next section. And we're going to lay it all out like it shows to do on the pattern. And once we get this together, this is where we ran into problems. Yep, we sure did. And But I'll show you how to fix it. Um, because just because somebody puts something on the internet doesn't make it right doesn't make if it's food it doesn't necessarily mean it tastes good it might look good but it might not taste good or if you're making it by pattern like this it doesn't mean it's necessarily right so i don't know if it was because of the distortion the distortion of my printer or if it was because of their pattern just wasn't right or whatever so we'll i'll show you how to fix it when you run into these problems so we're going to get this section glued together just like we did our first little section and I've kind of got an idea of where all of my little pieces are going to go and here's where, yep, see, it glues to that paper really quick, get it off of there. <laughs> I told y'all I found out how this works. And so when you glue these next little pieces in, you need to glue them in before you glue that next C piece in so that it, you make sure everything lines up. We'll get this glued together and then we'll move on to the next step. So here we are, we've got it all glued together and I've got some gaps in there um, from where I cut this. When you cut this type of material, if you cut it with an X-Acto knife, the problem is, is it ends up having um, those little nubs on it or it ends up cutting a little bit more off than what it should. So my solution to this was, is I'm gonna take some of these little bamboo skewers that I have and I'm going to take and add those in the places where my pieces don't quite meet because I didn't have enough material to cut more. And you won't even know they're there by the time we get through with this project because I'm going to take and um, put some wood putty over the top of this so that that doesn't show. Now here's where I noticed there was a problem. Watch this. Watch this. I'm kind of dry fitting it together to see how it goes. Uh, look at this. My front legs are longer than my back legs. Look at that. It's at an angle and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so messed up what happened. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay piece of that first section that we glue together over the top of this section and I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. And here's where my little seat fits in here, right here. And so this shows me how much longer those legs are than my other. So I drew little marks to where I needed to cut it off, and I did. But then that little rung was in the wrong place, because and it didn't look right. And so I wanted the chair to at least look right. You know, when you do something, you want it to look good, right? Especially if you're putting it on a YouTube video for other people to follow. So I made sure that that was in the right place and it is. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to take this thing apart again. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, and I take my X-Acto knife and I cut the glue apart. 
because this hasn't sat overnight, that glue is not solidified. So now I'm going to lay it back on top of piece, the second piece we did, and make sure that little rung is in the right place. And I'm marking it with pencil. It's okay to mark it with pencil because we're going to paint this white. Now, if you weren't painting this white, you would need to make sure you did that very lightly with pencil so that you could erase it. Some people like stuff made with natural wood. This time, I'm making this to match the table, so these little pieces are going to be painted white. And here I go. I'm measuring it up to it again, and we're good to go. So now is the next step. We're going to take this wood filler, and we're going to go in all the places. And yeah, this has been sitting up for a while, too. Oh, my goodness. When you don't use something on a regular basis, then it, it gets all glued and gunked up. But we're going to take this, and we are going to put it in there, and we're going to smooth it out with our finger because this is such a small project that works and then we're just going to keep doing this until we get all the gaps covered up that has the um, where we put the bamboo pieces and where all of our pieces come together and we're going to put this in every one of these places and then move on to the next step okay then the next thing we did is we took out our little finger sander and we are going to, and this is after this is completely dried, and we are going to go over this whole piece and make sure all the pieces are level because this craft wood is not necessarily level. Now what you see me doing there with the little putty knife or with my little uh, razor knife is I'm cutting in between where that putty got in between the little slats and I'm cutting out the extra so that it doesn't show. And I am just going through and smoothing this off and making sure everything matches to include the seat, to include this piece right here that is going to be our front piece. And then the next step is, is we're going to bring our table over and we are going to try to get our um, seat matched to the table. And I've got the color as close as I can now. Just to let y'all know, before this video is over, I will not have a chance to get the resin on the table or on the little seat like I did on the table, or you could use a polyurethane on that seat as well, just like you could on the table. Now, I didn't have a chance to get it done before the video was finished, but I did want to get this video out for y'all. I will go back and do that. And so the next step is, is we're, since we got our seat painted, it's drying. We're going to get out our Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. And we are going to paint the legs and the back piece to this so that we can get it ready to go. Now, from time to time, I grab a paintbrush and it's coming apart. I'll just take and stick some more glue in there and stick it back on there and put it back in the bucket and let it sit there for a couple of days until it gets dry. And then I'll use it again. Now... That's for my paintbrush tips that come off. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take and hold it with a little pair of pliers. These are my paint pliers. And we are going to paint this on all sides. The only side we're not going to paint is the side that is going to be glued to the seat. So we're going to get both of these pieces painted and we'll move to the next step. Now that we've got both pieces painted and we've got the seat painted, we're going to take and put this together. Now, I'm just checking it and making sure everything is completely covered. I'm going to put my little seat in there. And yes, I got that little mark across the seat, but I'm not too worried about it because it's going to cover up and it won't matter anyway. So then I'm going to take and put that glue, wood glue down in there. And then I'm going to take my little paintbrush and I'm going to wipe off the excess of the glue. And I'm going to take my finger and wipe off some more of it because the paintbrush didn't get off as much as I wanted it to. Then I'm going to add wood glue across the top of this piece that meets the seat. Now, you, you'll know which end is that piece because see the rung that we moved up? It's going to have a little gap before it hits the floor. So that's how you know which side goes up. And we are just going to stick that on there. And then I'm going to add some more painter's tape to this and let it dry. And then we'll see this at the final reveal. Here's where I added my little pieces of tape to make sure that it was good and had good uh, 
it was like my clamp and I'm holding it together until this gets good and dry. And then I'm gonna put one across the front of the seat. We'll let it sit there and dry and we'll see this in the final reveal. Here's another DIY to try out for yourself. Here we are with our first DIY and I got this uh, tray, I believe from the community thrift store. If you don't know what the community thrift store is, there's a video where I tell you all about it. I don't remember which one it is, so I'll go ahead and tell you again. It, it is where people, uh, sorry about that you guys, it is where people um, put out their trash at the end of the road and they, if they have something good that, that other people can pick up, then it's sitting out with the trash. And I got mine at the community thrift store. And I am cleaning it up because I saw the potential for this. And I took and sanded it down and I'm wiping it down and cleaning it up really good so that it's ready for paint and getting any of the dust off of it. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the Dixie Bell Slick Stick, which is now called Bonding Boss, but I bought mine back in the day when it was still bonding boss and I am going to take this and I'm going to paint the whole bottom of this the whole tray the handles and everything because this uh I don't know what this was painted with prior to this and some paints are subject to come off so if I put the bonding boss on there then I'm good to go because this stuff sticks it sticks this lid to the uh, container so tight that I that's why you saw the pause or the break in the video because I had to go get my husband to open it because it was so tight um, that's how well it sticks and he was like dang this stuff is stuck I said he just said that has it ever been open I said yes he said oh that's the reason why um, so I'm going to paint everything with the slick stick or you can paint it with bonding boss which is even better than slick stick now now the next thing I did was I painted the whole bottom of the box, let it dry, then I painted the inside of the box and I'm using the Sea Glass Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint. And I'm painting the whole thing inside and out, upside down, everything, and getting it, a good coat on it and getting it dried in. Now with that bonding boss on there, you don't need as much uh, as many coats, but I did have to go back because I saw some places that needed to be touched up and so that's what I did and it only took one coat with the bonding balls or the slick stick. And then I got some of this uh, metallic paint from Dixie Belle. It's called Moonshine Metallic and this one is in the gold and I'm going to go along the edges of this and paint it gold and I'm going to go all the way around the edge and then I'm going to also do the handles as well because I thought this really set it off really good for what I was doing with the transfer that I'm going to add to this in just a few minutes. So let me get this done and we'll get on with the next step. So the next thing I did is I got this retro peacock transfer from Dixie Bell and I am going to take this and add it to my tray here and it is absolutely a gorgeous transfer and I think if I remember correctly I think Dixie Bell just reduced the prices on these and we also sell them in our booth at Avonlea so you can make a tray or anything you want you can put this on a lamp so many different things so so many different things so here I am sorting through the transfers to see what goes with what and I wanted to use the peacock head but the peacock the big pieces of peacock were too big for the head that I had so I had to find the bottom to that one and there we go there it is so I'm going to cut this out and get it prepped and ready to put on this tray now we're going to lay down I wanted to lay down the tail first because it was the most intricate piece and I wanted to make sure I kind of centered it in the box where I had it and you're just going to rub over this transfer until you get it to come off now if you make a mistake I'll show you how to fix that in a few minutes but you just keep rubbing till you get this whole thing transferred on there I do make a mistake on here and don't even realize that I pulled um, a part of it off and didn't get it on there so I'll show you how to fix that 
Now make sure you've let your paint completely dry before you try to put any of these transfers on. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the plastic and rubbing it and then I go and put the top piece on as well and then I'm going to put the handles on to see if I want to do anything else with this and you just tighten these handles back down with the screws that came with it and I did clean up the screws because the screws were painted that yellowish white that the tray was and I just used a piece of sandpaper to get those screws cleaned off. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around these edges with some of these pieces and I'm looking to see how I want to lay things out. Okay, so here I'm getting you close up so you can see how I'm going to go around this corner. So I first did the face part of it. Now once I got all of that on there, then I'm going to lay this over and stick it down and then I'll rub it with my little stick. Now I did switch to one of my other sticks that I had in my craft drawer that was a lighter color because I noticed that the brown one, when I lifted it, if I accidentally ran off the plastic, it caused... A brown spot on my paint and I didn't want that to happen so I got a lighter color stick to do that. Now you're just going to press it until you get all of that stuff done on this part. Now I will say putting it putting stuff on wood is a little bit more difficult because the wood is porous and see how that other piece just came off? Well when you get it over there you're going to flip it over the edge. Now a piece of mine started coming off so I cleaned it up so that it would look right uh, just the way it was and I'm sorry I thought I had it in frame there. So you're just going to rub everything down and make sure it's good and stuck and I'm going to do this on all four corners and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, after I got all of this done, I'm going to check it over and make sure there's nothing else I want to put on there. You see the mistake I had? I cut out one of the little feather pieces and I'm going to take and put it down and I'm going to just rub it with my fingernail. And look at there, you can't even tell there was a mistake now. So use your transfers wisely as you do this. If you make a mistake, most of the time you can fix it. And then the next thing I'm doing is I'm looking over everything really good to make sure that I have everything where I want it. And then I'm going to place it on these little stands. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this now because um, I was doing it before because I was trying to get the paint to completely dry in all the other different spots. Um, but And so that I could make it on different levels so you can see it. Now I'm taking the extra coat that is by Dixie Bell Silk. And because this is a piece of wood furniture, I am going to take this and coat this so that this transfer will stay on here until somebody's ready to take it off. And this is also going to protect it. If they want to use the tray, it will keep it from... Um, anything from damaging the transfer and so we're just going to paint it on and I'm going to tell you what this extra coat goes a long way because I usually just dip my brush in it one time and it just goes on so good especially if you're using the silk one coat paint it goes even further but if you're using this chalk paint it's going to soak up a pretty good bit of this uh, extra coat that you're putting on here, but it turns out absolutely beautiful when you're done. So I'm going to get this painted and let it dry, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, here we are finishing it up and letting it get good and dry and making sure that we've got even the handles covered, checking for any dry spots, and then we'll let this dry and we'll see it at the final reveal. Here's another DIY to try out for yourself. Now this little tray I picked up at the at a garage sale and it was pretty bad. Um, it was originally some kind of silver. They put some kind of acid on it and to get it to flake and look all weird like it is. I don't know why they would do that. But I'm going to take a wire brush to it and clean up all these little flakes off of it. And then I'm going to try out some metallic paints on this. And when I got it finished, I was like, mm, not sure if I like it or if I should add something else or if I should use something else on it. So tell me in the comments below what you would do with this because I'm going to show you what I'm doing. But then I'm going to ask you to give me your comments if you think I should add a transfer to this or just add like a grunge wax or something on there or some kind of wax over the top of this. I don't know. I'm sitting there in a quandary about what to do with it. I like the color of it that it turned out to be. But let's get to the next step. 
Right, so the next thing I did is I broke out the slick stick again. Yes, it is bonding boss now. I know this. Um, but I broke out the slick stick. I'm trying to get this stuff used up. And I found that whenever you're painting metal pieces, it works really well. Um, when I was recovering from working, from being in the hospital, I did paint a metal saw. And on one of the days I thought I was going to get in here and just do all kinds of stuff and break out a bunch of videos. It never happened because I got in here, got started, and then I was like, ugh, I feel awful. And I went and laid back down. But I did get the slick stick on it and get it coated. And anyway, my husband asked me why I would ruin such a good saw. <laughs> my husband's always asking me why I'm doing what I'm doing. But I was like, because I got an idea. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't like my ideas. He thinks they're silly. Um, and I need to get a new brush because this brush is falling apart. Um, but I didn't want to, I don't like using a good brush when I'm using my, um, slick stick because it does get cakey in these brushes and it does wash out but I just prefer myself personally to use an older brush and yeah you know, after this brush was done I was done with it today it wasn't going to get used again it got uh put in file 13 so anyway we're going to paint this whole thing with Bondi balls and then the next thing that I'm do is I'm going to take some of this silk mineral chalk mineral paint that is called Quiet Cove and it almost looks white but it's not white it's got a bluish tint to it now I know this video is not going to make it look like it's got a bluish tint to it too much but it does have a bluish tint to it because you saw the metallic that I put out there for you to see now whenever you use the metallic paints the concept behind it is is you're supposed to paint it with a color a lighter color underneath and that's similar to it and then add this over the top of it so this does have a bluish tint to it you just can't tell in this video so um, I'm going to put this down and get it painted on here I'm going to do the front the back and the top and then we'll move on to the next step after that paint dries sorry about that I was trying to get the camera in and everything in line I'm going to take this Caribbean blue moonshine metallic and I'm going to paint this this is absolutely a gorgeous color and I'm going to paint the top and the bottom and everything with it and then we're going to let it dry and we will see this at the final reveal this turned out really pretty but in the comments below I want you to leave me a message and tell me whether you would put a wax over the top of this that would get in all of those little uh, divots and stuff on there or if I should put a transfer on there or if I should leave it like it is but we'll see the rest of this at the final reveal now here's another DIY to try out for yourself there is a video where I made it before and go check that one out because it'll show exactly how I made this and all the details and here's another picture of it lit up and we'll see the rest of this one at the final reveal if I can get a better picture today now here's DIY number four all right, here we are. We got this beautiful piece at the thrift store and it is very, very old. Each one of these cabinet doors lock with a key and it's also got old, such old glass in it that the glass ripples and it's very old. But it, the, it had one problem. It didn't have enough shelves for what I was going to use it for. But I'm going to show you how I used it. I took it and I put it on top of a dresser that we already had and well, it's not a dresser it's a cabinet and I'm assuming it was like an old TV cabinet or something and we put that in my kitchen now my husband was gracious enough to go out here and cut me some shelves for it now that shelving board my neighbors were actually throwing it out I walked over and asked him if I could have it and he was gracious enough and gave it to me and it was the same color as what's in the cabinets and I didn't even have to paint it or anything and you don't even know that it wasn't uh, painted for that cabinet so he is going and getting uh, the stuff he needs now I know how to use the saw but because he brought the saw out, he said, I'll cut it for you. So what he did is he laid the shelves that I had on there, in the cabinet on there, and measured them out and then cut it for me. And it just made it go so much faster. And so then I was just holding the end of the board up for extra support. And 
Um, he told me to set it down while he wasn't using it. And so he went in to make sure that it was going to fit the shelf and it fit beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I had him cut every bit of the boards that he could out of this one board. I told him I needed two of the skinnier shelves and four of the larger shelves. That way I would have extra shelves. And look at me over there chomping down on that gum. <laughs> <laughs> and I got it on fast forward. That's why it looks like I'm going fast. But anyway, um, he took and put the board on there, measured it and cut it. And that's all there was to it. And then we'll get on to the next step. Now uh, here we are, and I'm showing you the two boards and how close those colors are. And I didn't even worry about painting the shelves or anything because by the time you get the jars on there, you're not going to notice. And here I am in the kitchen. Now here I am in the kitchen wiping all the shelves off and putting them in and seeing where I needed them. And I didn't have to do anything to this cabinet. So it's still all original. I still have the wheels that go on the bottom of it. I still have all of the uh, hardware that goes to it, the original hardware. So I'm putting the nicer shelves that originally came with it up top because my shelves that I j had just cut do not... Um, are not painted on the bottom so if I put them towards the bottom nobody will know they're not painted so I'm putting all these in here and what I use this for is I store all my dry mixes now if you want to see how I make some of my dry mixes and put them in here and store it go watch what the Tuckers over on YouTube it's my new YouTube channel that I just started showing all the canning the cooking and the gardening that I'm adding in um, on this channel and just showing us how to do regular everyday living and going back to the basics because if you've read those the back of your boxes it says like some of those mixes it says it has bioengineered ingredients in it and I'm like uh no I'm not eating no bioengineered stuff no more I'm trying to get healthy I'm trying to lose weight trying to get everything back to um where I'm healthy again because it's caused problems with my gut and I'm ready to make some changes and I'm going to bring y'all along. All right, y'all, that's the end of this one and we'll see the rest of this at the final reveal in the pictures of it as I finish stocking it. Now, at this time, we'd like to thank our subscribers. We love you bunches. We appreciate everything you do for this channel. All the, the liking, the sharing, and the big thumbs up and having conversations with us through the comments. We really enjoy all of that and we appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We wouldn't be a channel if it wasn't for y'all watching. And so we just want to give you a big thanks. Here we go with the final reveal and all the embellishments. Now, here we are at our first project and my little granddaughter is looking at her spices and playing with them and she is absolutely having a blast. Now, her and her little sister have been playing with them and this is their little kitchen and they love to play like their, their mom cooking in the kitchen. And so here she is again checking out her kitchen. Isn't this just adorable? My kids used to play with spices like this all the time, spice jars. Now here's that tray and I added the little flower in the center of it. It turned out absolutely beautiful and this will be making it to our booth. Now here is our tray when I sat it over at the photo station while I'm waiting on it to dry. It still looks nice and pretty and white, doesn't it? And with those uh, black and white flowers on it, absolutely gorgeous. Then here's what it looked like when it dried. I guess it's going to fit into my booth being perfectly vintage because it changed colors. It turned this light green and dark green color and it looks very aged. And I think it's because whatever is in that extra coat had a chemical reaction with the silver that is originally on this piece. And so... Yeah, we're going to put it in the booth and see if it sells like this. If it doesn't, we'll bring it back home. We'll put a sealer on it and repaint it and put transfers back on it again. Now, here is that beautiful dresser that we were working on. Look at that wood. Isn't that absolutely 
gorgeous. You guys, I apologize for not being able to finish this, but the rain wasn't cooperating with us. And this wasn't a project I could do inside because of my allergies. So we'll see this one on the next third Thursday thrift flip. Yes, we will. Hopefully if the weather cooperates. As most of you know, Beth and I opened the Chic Shack over at the Avonlea Mall. And here is the mall. It is 8101 Phillips Highway. Come visit us. We'd love to have you. We've also added Dixie Bell Paints to our booth through Southern Bell Paints. And also, Beth has started a new channel called Kel Shenanigans. And we have started What the Tuckers, all to further God's kingdom. Turn out awesome. So you guys, if you like this content, subscribe. Hit that notification bell and give us that big thumbs up because it really helps our channel out. And we'll see you in the next episode of the Crafty Art Shack. We'll see you later. Bye.